Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for coming tonight. And uh, it's really nice to see so many people here. Um, OK, I first of all want to say a few thank yous to people who have helped. Um, thank you to Creative Scotland for the funding. Thank you to WASPs for giving me the gallery space. And also thank you to Ian for doing the printing. And not here, Gary for framing, Maria for help with hanging, James for help with the promo. And special thanks to Adriana who has helped me with creative support throughout. Um, AI is very much in the zeitgeist at the moment. And it's a kind of field that's moving so fast that I think it's quite hard to have proper intuitions about it. And as soon as we know one thing or get a feel for it, it's changed again. Um, there is a lot of anxiety about it. A lot of things about it are scary. And a lot of controversies around it. And I think most of these are justified and to some extent, in my opinion. Like, there's a lot of problems with it. So I wanted to give a little talk to kind of describe why I'm working with it and sort of what my own critical angle on, on it is. First of all, just quickly, like, what is AI? Because it's, it's kind of presented in the media as this new thing, this new kind of bubble that's all by itself. It's a bit of a mystery. But the technologies behind it is, is kind of this field of computer science called machine learning. And that's been going on for 20 years. And if I were to summarize how it works, sort of the normal old school way of programming a computer is that you design a program step by step. You state every single thing that the computer does, and you build up like that from the bottom. And the approach in machine learning is instead you kind of just make a really, really complicated random program, like more complicated than anyone could ever decide to build. And then you get a load of examples of how it should work. That's your training data. So you say, when I give you this input, I want to see this output. And as you go through them, you just tweak the program slightly. It's made up of loads of numbers, and you just keep on changing these numbers slightly. And if you get a few things right, over time, your program will start to converge to do the things you want. And the thing you end up with, nobody can really understand how it works in detail. It's got that mystery to it. Um, but that process, like right now, the AI that's kind of dominating the headlines and stuff is generative AI. So it's like chat GPT and image generation systems where you type in, I want a picture of a tomato, and you get a tomato coming out. And we don't really know. And that's quite new and fresh. But that technology is the same things that means that when you swipe on your iPhone and the phone recognizes it's a swipe, it's, that's also machine learning. And it's the same thing. Nobody's told exactly how to do that. They've just recorded a lot of examples. And I kind of want to give that introduction to AI because it's relevant, I think, to what the kind of critical angle is here. So the problems with AI, and there are many, but the ones I'm most interested in are the ones that are affecting us right now rather than these possible apocalyptic scenarios in the future. And those are that it kind of solidifies many of the prejudices that we have in society today, and it kind of puts them into this concrete form that then automates them happening. It's displacing people from work. It's, uh, it's kind of removing some sense of the value of being human in some sense to kind of have like the things that we do that we've worked really hard to develop. These skills are kind of displaced into something else. And it's also being used to rip off the creative work of a lot of people who have invested a lot of their lives in doing that. And for me, a lot of these problems are not actually problems with AI itself as a technology, because as I said, it's kind of everywhere, but into the way, the way that technology is being used in particular ways, the way it's being introduced. And a lot of them also have the heart in this kind of property of AI, which is that it takes things that were previously quite complicated to do and scales them up to make them really easy, or make them really reproducible. So when it comes to issues of prejudice in AI, like we all have prejudices. But because we're all different people, we're all a bunch of diverse people, they can at least hopefully balance each other out. And they're slowly changing over time, so that gives us a bit of hope. But when you take a monolithic AI system and you train it on all of the data of humanity, and then you clone that system, 
and put it out in the world and reproduce it, then all of the problems, all of the quirks, just get reproduced in the same way. And those imperfections get amplified. So the focus on my practice is about self-expression, about how we use computers for self-expression. And I'm particularly interested in how we're using AI for self-expression. For example, if you think of, say, ChatGPT, which maybe we can have a conversation, but we can also use ChatGPT to help us express ourselves, like to help us write a letter to somebody. But when we do that, we're all using the same ChatGPT, so we all end up expressing ourselves in the same way. And we kind of have this homogenization of expression. It's like we're outsourcing expressing ourselves to a singular tool that's being used over and over again. And what I think that does is when you're using it, you have this sense of power. You're like, oh, wow, I can do this thing. I can do that thing now. I can like, generate a 1,000 funding applications in a day. That's great. But everybody else has exactly the same tool. And your sense of identity, the thing that makes you who you are, or makes you feel special, or makes you feel you have something to contribute, is getting diluted in the same way, because we're all kind of merging into the same kind of person by using the same tools. So this project with AI, which like I've been, I started working with AI about five years ago, and this particular project has been researched over maybe the last two and a half years. And the main constraint I've had going into it, which is right from the outset, is that I only want to use my own data in training these models. I want to put myself into it as best as I can. And even if I lose control of that, I know there's no one else in it. So I can feel that sense of uh, authenticity in what I'm seeing. That like, I can just trust that even though it's unpredictable, I can trust that it's coming from me. So the particular AI system I'm using, it's called StyleGAN, or it's like the third iteration of StyleGAN 3. And because I wanted to train it myself and do it on, I'm doing it on my own computer, it's not quite as big and monolithic as some of the systems out there like ChatGPT or Midjourney or Stable Diffusion. The systems where you type in your text and you get an image, those are huge systems. And this is a smaller one. And the way it works is you just give it loads and loads of images and you train it. And in my case, it took six weeks to train. And it tries to generate new images that look like the ones you gave in it. So I gave it every single photo I've ever taken, which is like, I took out photos of other people's faces. So that brought it down to 25,000 photos. Trained it and then got it going. So it's trying to make photos that look like something that I've seen before. It's only ever seen what I've seen. And because that set of images was a bit too diverse for what this model's designed for, it started glitching and it started making these errors and these kind of uncanny mistakes. And to tell you the truth, like with 25,000 photos, I don't need any more. Like my interest in doing this wasn't actually in making new photos. So I'm not looking for pure imitation. But it was in the glitches and the mistakes that it made that sometimes it was quite beautiful in a way. And sometimes it was quite mysterious too because it almost seemed to reveal something about how we perceive the world. Certainly something about how this model is perceiving the world. Uh, the way it kind of starts off in a particular image like a face or a tree but then kind of dissolves into these repeating forms. What I also found is that the... AI image was creating this little square picture, but I had the option to move that picture. I could move it to the side. And as I moved it, there would be more picture that was hidden on the outside, like beyond the frame borders. It was like this picture just went on forever. But the further away I got from that little frame, the weirder and more glitchy it got. So I modified it in a way, and like I might have this little square was the thing it came out originally, and I just kind of moved the frame to build up these images piece by piece. And so you can kind of see from the center, it's the most like lifelike, if you like. Um, and as you get further out, it gets more and more disintegrating. And what we're seeing here, for me, is the kind of mathematical forms and the building blocks of how the AI is making these images. And for me, that's super exciting, because I get to kind of understand it as a medium rather than as a mystery, in a sense. And like working with it for a few years, including this interactive work where you can kind of morph from one image to another by moving the body in front of it was another way of exploring sort of 
not just what images I can make with it, but how those images are kind of sit together in some kind of landscape of possibilities. So, for me, the first thing, yeah, is the personal nature of it, the fact that it feels like it's me, and it's this kind of collaboration between my memories and this medium. But the other thing I found was that I actually started making these images, I think I first got them about two years ago, two and a half years ago. And when I first saw them, I just didn't know what to make of them. And part of the problem I had is that when you work with technology and some new technology comes out, it's sometimes very easy to make something that looks cool, that you feel is yourself. But then you put it out there and then you find everyone else is making stuff that looks very similar. And you kind of get seduced into this feeling of like, this is mine, when actually it's just stuff that's already in the tool. So it's actually been a couple of years of working with it, watching how the field of AI has evolved around it, and getting this ever larger set of images and finding just some things that really resonate with me and a huge amount of stuff that doesn't in a way. And so the images you see here are kind of built up over that time, and it's built up with the relationship I have of seeing it seeing everything I've seen in my life and then seeing these images come and how they touch me in a way. And yeah, the final thing is there was, I got really annoyed because James, who did the promo, told me that one of the reviewers said he wasn't going to come because he doesn't want to review any more works that glorify AI. And I was like, that's really annoying because I feel like to take that position of like AI is bad, we need to like criticize it in every possible opportunity. It, it's kind of built on a very reductive idea of what AI is in a sense. And it's very much about the way it's being used in certain contexts and the way certain models are being used. And I think that AI is here, it's already here, it's been around us for a while. And we're in this moment of transformation now. And it's really on us to not just criticize how we don't want it to be used, but also to like build it in the ways that we do want it to be used and to imagine the world that we want to have and to put that into being. So that's my real intention with all of this is to like give an example of my own little weird journey into using AI and what it does for me and why I'm still using it. And I'm still very excited about it. And uh, yeah, and hopefully give that a little bit of speculation on how our relationship with it might be different. Thank you very much for coming.